Well, one morning I went in in the early oh, mid-30s to the office in, uh, in Madison Avenue of Paul White running and I went in and found there were, there were two offices instead of one. Instead of Paul's office, it was Paul, and there was a new little cubbyhole called the Talks Department. And that was being run by a man just been hired by CBS. Uh, his name was Ed Morrow. He came from an academic background, we were told. That's all we knew. He had a lady uh, assistant called Helen Suset, uh, and um, he was to run the talks department and the division. But the division, obviously, between what was a talk and what was a special event was very narrow. If I went down to, uh, to interview uh, Secretary of State, which I did, Cordell Hull, was that to come under talks and under Ed or, or under Paul? Well, they knew there was danger, so ostensibly they got along very well. And Paul pretended to think to say that it, uh, Paul pretended this was a good move, and he got all that junk off his uh, off his desk, all these talks. And so, what I worked for both of them, as you see. From then on, I'd been working just for Paul as the voice of special events, and now I became also the voice of the talks department. So the basic relationship was that Ed did the scheduling of talks, Paul did the scheduling of public affairs and special events. And I did the on-air on voice for both. And that's, that's how we went along for quite a while. And it was very hard to follow him in London because he had been so distinctive and, uh, and, and not really, uh, you know, not, not really a professional broadcaster. When I got to London, I was delayed in Lisbon for two weeks, uh, trying, in a bottleneck, trying to get from Portugal to London to, to relieve him. When I got there, there wasn't much time left. But well, one thing he said to me was that he did he did not fancy himself as a broadcaster. He still was an executive in his own mind. He said, and uh, if I may uh, exercise a, uh, not a little bit, but a great deal of a swelled head here for a moment, but my proudest moment in broadcasting, I guess, uh, was before the war began and Ed was in London broadcasting back to New York. And, and I was in New York and Paul White was on the Q channel talking privately to Ed between broadcasts and between me and Calvin Moore was mixed up in it too. And Paul didn't like something that Ed had done and he was remonstrating with him on, on the private line and said, uh, you know, Ed, you should have done this or that. And, and Ed broke out and even forgot himself so much as to use profanity on the, uh, on the private air, which you weren't supposed to do. And he said, hell, Paul, I'm no Bob Trout. And uh, I filed that away in my memory. I think that was the high point of my mm -hmm, career. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so he really, uh, whether it was true or not, he always said that what he really was was a, a business executive, a corporation administrator. He was not a broadcaster. 